Yo, it's Guido coming at you with the Tactics Talk. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning in. As always, I do appreciate your support of the channel. A little bit different today. Bitwise, we've got a four pack coming at you. We're going to talk about initial positioning and meta. And we're going to have our guest star, Bitwise, here, who was kind enough to send me four games. Said so he's having a little bit of a frustrating time right now with the game, the, new, the changes in the meta, initial positioning, aggression versus carefulness. So I've said careful aggression for a long time. Still believe in that quite a bit. As you know, I'm quite aggressive. When you watch me stream, I'm very often out front, and that does get me overextended sometimes. Uh, what I'm trying to do right now is more of the careful aggression. And then we've got other people who are even more, I don't want to say passive, but let me call it more careful. Passive, I would consider sitting back on the red line or hanging out at cap, doing absolutely nothing. Uh, Bitwise is a good player. We've played a couple times together and worked together on a few things, but I have noticed that he's more careful than I am in general. So we're going to take a look at these four battles. They were four from the same airplane. The same airplane? <laughs> I get confused sometimes. The same, <laughs> I almost said the same jet. Four of the same tank, Progetto 46, and they were all played right in a row. And I find this to be very effective for debrief because I can see four games played on different maps all right in a row, and it gives me a better idea of what the general gameplay type is for the player. So I think there were some very interesting things here. We are on Himmel's Oak and spawned into the southwest, and we'll see that Bitwise heads back here. Now I'm going to hold off a little bit on specifics about his gameplay, and let's talk a little bit right now about how the meta in the game has changed over the recent I would say maybe year or so and feels like it's possibly accelerating a little bit and it is turning into a much more careful game for a lot of players now if you watch a lot of the streamers especially the very good streamers you'll see some very careful gameplay however they will be up near where they can get shots and we've got Bitwise going, how did we lose a T-44 that fast? That was amazing. Did he drown? I have no idea. Anyway, Bitwise is going to the tracks, which I believe is the critical train on this map, but he's hanging way back, right? Now, the Progetto is not really known for its great turret, but it is very mobile. It's got the auto-reloader mechanism going on for it and decent accuracy and OK pen. So it looks to me like he's waiting to see what's going on. For me, I would be up where the LT-432 is because I want to try to push the rope a little bit and be more aggressive. What I won't do now is automatically roll over into the ditch. Now that ditch is critical to winning the tracks over here. Now you can see that Bitwise has a lot of teammates. He is firing into the bush, doing some blind firing, which is fine, but he's still sitting way back. But to his credit, now we're moving forward. So he is allowing this fight to develop a little more than I would. I would be up forward in the Progetto 46 looking to create any kind of overmatches or opportunities for myself and to get shots earlier, closer, where it's easier to hit things and hit uh, weak spots, things like that. However, both of us would have to assess what's going on right now. So we're going to pause this and take a look at it because very interesting, we don't have very much going on in the tracks via the purple guys. Where are they? Well, I don't know. This becomes oftentimes a situation where you go, ooh, we're winning a flank, let's push into cap. We've said this a million times, this is what it looks like. This is that situation where it looks like things are going really well, but frankly they aren't. We've lost two guys, we're down oh, almost 3,000, maybe 2,500 hit points right here. The town is not in great shape. A good number of good tanks are camping, the 4502, the RHM, the 5100, the T103, and we have a decent push going on on the tracks, but is that really good right now? Probably not. Let's see how it develops. So Bitwise being a good player is following up right now, whereas I would have been a little bit further forward. I think overall it's a wash for whichever way I play or he played on this map for this particular match, right? Because we haven't really run into anything. It wouldn't have mattered if I was up forward on this. Let's see what happens from here. Another guy dies. So now we're starting to see some dudes running away and it looks like the purple team sent nobody to the tracks. 
Again, you fight the match you have, not the one you wish you had or the one you expect. Start with the one you expect, then take in the essay on what's going on and change from there. React. All right, you need a little lead fire there. Self, uh, Self-evident self when you miss and shoot behind him. So we're just trying to get some shots out, maybe take that. Well, I think we're waiting to get reloaded, which is not a bad idea either with the Progetto because once you get fully reloaded, you got that nice three clip and you don't, uh, you don't get behind the alpha game or the DPM game if you wait for all of your shells to reload on the Progetto. I, you had time to do it, you might as well do it. You can see right there, he goes boom, boom, boom. He's able to take down the T-44. That actually increases your DPM possibilities. So, pause a rama ding dang. This is not going well. Down 6,000 plus hit points, it looks like we are down five to one tanks. Sure, we won this We won this flank, but really it's time to go back. And I think Bitwise made a good decision turning around here and headed back. He had shots, might as well take those hit points, but now it's time to go back. And what I found was interesting on this particular going back situation is he didn't really push into the cab. He kind of hangs out back here a little further back. The good news is he's getting some shots, but these are all long-range shots, and they can be very tricky. So we're going to take a shot there. We get a bounce. Actually, we hit. We just didn't go through any armor. We hit something that didn't have armor behind it. Armor not hit. Meanwhile, we can tell that our cap is certainly going to be threatened. Hit points are getting further and further out of control. We're down 7,000 plus, maybe closer to 8,000. But we are able to farm some damage. Now, this becomes... I don't necessarily like the word farm. I realize that's sort of what it looks like, but and I've talked a lot about this with people who are looking for consistency in their game on coaching. Sometimes this stuff right here, this kind of stuff happens. These kind of games, these kind of teams, this kind of situation. To be honest, I think it was a great idea to go to the tracks by his team. The other team just did not send them there. And I think this game goes a lot better if the green team all student body right or left in this case and went back to cap. If every single one of them had gone back to cap, engaged the aggressive purples and left all the campers to sit there, they may have been able to pull this one back because everybody defending against a few attackers is a good idea. See what we have here is a few defenders against a bunch of attackers. There's an overmatch at the cap. Yes, the greens have made an overmatch at the enemy cap, but the cap on this map is really easy to defend. It's really easy, and unless they're jumping on the cap, attempting to put pressure on it and somehow win via cap, or the fact that they draw a bunch of purples out into the open and kill them, just going to the back of the cap and sitting there isn't going to do bubkiss, especially when you're down 6,000 hit points. So... All that discussion then is to say that sometimes in the consistency regime, guys, and I hate to say this, and you're always trying to get to a win, but sometimes the best you can do is the best you can do, which is to hang out in a place like this and go ahead and farm some damage off these guys. There's that word, not my favorite word. You are trying to win. I mean, if you continually bring guys down and you delete enough hit points, maybe you get to a win but it's not really looking very probable, right? The difference, as I say, always between possible and probable. Now, I will say for Bitwise, maybe just go in there and get your hit points. Now, I don't know if we're still trying to win or maybe we're trying to fall back so we have a better defensive position, but you've got 2,000, and from a consistency standpoint of just, I need to get some damage, some credit, some experience, really, at this point, all I'm looking for out of this game is to get as much damage, experience, and credits as possible and some assist if I can chuck it in there. And if somewhere along the way all of that adds up to a win, that would be great. So we go ahead and flex back this way. Meta flex. Coons is in the middle. Got to have a little sip of coffee. We have another Progetto on the tracks. Our gun's been silent for a while. Looking for maybe a shot on the Kunza. He's behind a building. And now we're backing out this way. Two guys on the cap. Really just kind of back and forth. Not making much of a move in any direction. Trying to figure out if maybe we can hit this 
Ferdinand. Doesn't look like it. Just looking for a highlight. He's behind something, it would appear. Maybe a hill or potentially one of the buildings that's kind of sitting around over in that general area. Who knows? Meanwhile, we can see the alarm is going off. The counter is going down. I think pushing in one direction or the other, whether you push to your cap looking for hit points or push to their cap looking for hit points, might have been a, a better plan right here just overall. As I've said a couple times, you're probably not going to win. There you go. We finally get some shots. And who cares if we take some hits? Just trying to get some in there. And we end up with a defeat. All right. So initial positioning. Good idea. Interesting game. Didn't go quite the way you might expect. Meta-wise, your team hurts you by pushing into the cap. Not a lot you can do. I don't think you needed to solo YOLO back into your, into your cap necessarily. But you might have been a little late game to get some more hit points out of it. So just... Keep this one in mind as we move on for context to the next three. Okay, the second one is here on Corellia, and we're top tier, which means we gotta we gotta get our damage on. If we're gonna be top tier in a three tier battle, there are three artillery, a couple heavies to deal with, C one thirty, the Lance and C is a pretty good medium, so not a necessarily a, a easy game, but definitely an opportunity for our Pajito to do a bunch of damage. We'll take a look at the initial positioning on that, but I want you to think about being careful. But then I want you to also think about how do I start to create the opportunity and situation for a win? How do I start to create the conditions for a win? As a general rule, it's early damage and early guns out that starts to create an advantage for my team. So just think about that. Think about the last game. We didn't really have an opportunity to do that. We went to the right place. We even followed up decently, but the enemy team wasn't there. And then our reaction became purely defensive. So let's take a look at this game. And we go right here with the medium. What's following us? Well, we don't really have a lot of backup. Pretty easy to go around that corner and get jumped on. Most of our team is going up to the north. T20 shows up and we don't shoot. Okay. I don't know, man. I think I take the shot and I jump into the rock and I see what happens. If he spotted me, fine. Scorpion G. We get a little bit of assistance out of it. And we sit here. We're kind of waiting to see what happens. Meanwhile, our guys head to the north. Looks like only the T20 went around that corner. This is a hard one, guys, because we discussed the meta. It's kind of changing right now. Used to be both teams would rage around that corner and try to get as many guys up that hill as possible. And usually the team that got the most up there won. That's changing quite a bit. Now look at this. The Tiger P and the OI start moving. We take a shot at the Tiger P, but that's a bounce because he's got pretty good armor. So we decide to switch over to the OI. Put a couple nice shots into him and kill him. All right, good. There's a little advantage for our team created. Some hit points. Black Prince is going in. IS-3 and Tiger P go around the corner. Tiger P actually continues here. IS-3 crosses without taking a shot. Tiger P. And we're being very, very careful, right? So far, we haven't been seen. That appears to be kind of the priority force right now. I put a nice shot into that guy. We've waited to reload all three shells. That's what I talked about just a minute ago. We take two and then move in. I, I got to tell you, for, for my money, for me, I, I, I shoot all those shells if they're ready. I, tr I continue to try to get rid of hit points as fast as I can. And I know there is a trade-off between reloading all three with a Progetto. And we mentioned it earlier how the DPM actually increases by waiting for it to reload all three. But there's also a time opportunity cost of letting guys who are out in the open go without taking that shot that's clear at them because as they lose hit points you increase the possibility of your guys who are up front the black prince and the 3002 of gaining hit points so in the case of i have the opportunity for a good clear shot i take them all and then i go hide and reload but let's see how it goes from here 3002 is taking hits we're doing our best not to get spotted nice shot into that guy uh, unfortunate bounce and there we go so you did reload two and come out and take two more 3002 is taking some hits is3 is stacked up scorpion does a nice job and then he doesn't quite get out of the way i think he eats a shot in the side right here unfortunately yeah 
So he's not doing what he needs to be doing. And the two of you and behind this one rock are it's going to be a little bit tough from now on. And then we're going to bail out. And off we go. Repositioning. Mid-game. This is roughly mid-game or moving into mid-game. Mid-game to late-game repositioning is important. But I sort of question why we bailed out of that spot. I sort of question why we bailed out of that spot. I don't think I would have done that necessarily. I probably would have continued to support the Black Prince. But we're going to come around to the middle. And the position, as far as the decision of where to go, is actually pretty good. We come around here. What's interesting, though, is we find out that there's a guy in the middle somewhere we don't see. Because we get spotted here. Yeah, there we go. We turtle up against this rock. It actually surprised me at where this guy is. <laughs> I think he must have been behind a rock for a potato. At least based on your angle. There he is. He's right there. <laughs> and he may have been moving around. But holy macaroni. I think an auto aim, which I maybe you did auto aim right there. So we take that guy down. That's the beauty of the auto loading kind of tank. Guy shows up like that. You boom, boom, boom. But now you got the long reload, doing the right thing, turtling up. And we take a look at the, the setup now, and we're winning. This is now Rompel Stomp time. It's time to go get our hit points. We know there's a T20 and a Tiger P back there. We can see the uh, Su-130, maybe even got a shot on him there. Waiting for the reload. Nope, dies. All right, and move up. So now coming around the corner. Go up to the top. We actually run into three of them up here at least, maybe two by the time we figure it out. We get spotted. There's a guy there. Ouch. There's a, there's a guy there. So there's a whole bunch of them up here. Got two shells reloaded out. Here comes this fella and the ISM. Holy macaroni, we got to back out of that thing. I kind of like that not falling off. That was a good idea initially, but he sort of pushes up. We decide to go ahead and just roll off the back. I don't know what the ISM's plan is. I guess he's just going to YOLO in and try to get some damage. Unfortunately, he gets shot from about 42 different directions because there's all kinds of people shooting him from up by the cap. Artie flying in. We're, we can't get around the Scorpion G because we're on soap rocks. We finally kind of come up and around. He dies. And here, from here, I just go straight at one of the two guys. Either the Tiger P, who seems to have more hit points and then loses some. It looks like you decide to uh, shear off of him and go after the Lance and see... And this, this goes about as badly as possible for the stupid Lance and C. And it's one of the things that's really frustrating about this tank is sometimes when you come in here and you auto-aim things, you're going to end up with a bounce off the Lance and C. Otherwise, he's a three-shot kill. So we auto-aim. Oh, geez, that really sucked. Maybe just roll in there and ram him and shoot him twice. Who cares? You get two out of it, three out of it, and he's still got hit points. He's going to thump you again because he's got a fairly decent reload. We're going to go hide behind the old OI carcass right there. So maybe a few more hit points gained by just going at him and ramming him. I don't know if you... You might have killed yourself, actually. We'd have to... That would be interesting. would have been interesting to see. But you may have also had enough hit points left to get that last shell out. Possibly he kills you as well with that return shot that you took, but you do a little bit more damage. So I thought those two were interesting, right? We've got the one, go to the tracks, good initial positioning. I liked it. A little further back than I would have been, a little bit more careful. Good follow-up when you saw the situation. And then your whole team needed to go back. You went back to the middle, farmed a little bit of damage. On this one, really for me, I would have gone to the, the middle, but I may have died doing so because we didn't have a lot of help. So I think you were watching that maybe a little closer than I would on occasion hang out at that at that rock right there you'd have to let me know on whether that rock is kind of a standard spot you go to or if you were just noticing there wasn't a lot of backup down there in the south at which point that's a good assessment and not a bad place to go to get some get some free shots on guys and then kind of shoot them through the bush right there personally i would have stayed and helped them uh, against that push right there but the the move to the middle got you some more hit points all right let's look at the third one Numero three on highway, on highway, and we are a bottom tier and a two tier. I think for me, of of the, all four of these, I'll have, to, I'll have to look at the fourth one, I don't quite remember, but for me, this one was a little bit, 
more or less the most perplexing one for me. And I've seen people go to this spot and hang out for a good portion of the game. And I'll be very, very honest with you, I don't get it. I'm not really sure what's to be gained from sitting up here. It, this is a very passive, this is actually a, one of those passive spots for me, me personally. This is a spot that you're relying on your team to do something. And if you farm, truly farm some damage from this spot, great. Uh, if you lose, uh, you have to take it on on your own shoulders or to or to realize that you're part of the reason that guy's lost hanging out back there. You know, maybe it's I want to try to see if I can get some lights out of the middle. Okay, fair enough. Um, but it, it is a perplexing spot for me, and I and I, like I said, I don't really understand. So you, you'll have to throw it down there. I'm sure you got good reasons why, uh, and there's no reason why you know people have to agree in positioning completely in this game. But I, I'm be honest with you, this one I don't get. Now it may have been somewhat of a an assessment, or potentially you like this part of it where you sit there and, and shoot people who are trying to cross. For me, I would be in the city. I don't particularly like the northwest anymore. It's just really difficult from this spawn to do anything up there uh, without getting peeled out by the enemy team who has much better sniper positions where you can see the T-30 and the JP and all those other clowns sitting back there. The 7-1 did go kind of take a look, but now he's running away bravely. You get a shot in there and help kill the 705, so good on you. And it may be more of a case like you're thinking, well, I'm going to be more of a support vehicle on this. I am a relatively light-skinned medium. Why would I go into town? But you have a good crowd in town, so I think right now. So even if you went to this, what I'm gonna let's call it a careful spot. So let's you know go. <laughs> let's let's leave this video, friends. I won't I won't call you passive. But if I saw what's happening right now, I would get in there and help them gun these guys down as fast as possible, because probably gonna have a problem at our cap in the near future. And going up and sitting on this hill here isn't going to stop that problem. So what we need to do is start to consider the time issue with this game. I need to help clear this up, and then I need to help get back to the cap. And if I can convince as many people by clicking on the cap as much as I can or do something to get them back to cap. But first, problems first, let's clean up the town. And it looks like your team is about to do it. But I think if you were in there with your little auto reloader thumping people, boom, 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 you to help them get rid of it. So this is why at the beginning of this video I started talking about things about being a, a little more carefully aggressive the way I do it where I'm going to go into town and look for an opportunity to leverage my strength as opposed to sit back and snipe at things and hope that the situation of the game avails itself such that that becomes important. Right? I want to be up where I'm making a determination. I want to have a vote earlier in the game at a more important spot than hanging out right here and hoping that the team does good enough that my my sniping back here will matter. And as as we knew, we're going to have an issue up here at the cap. And unfortunately, as we also know, all the guys that pushed into town are now going to push across a big open area, or at least a good portion of them will, attempting to go after their cap when there's a Sturve and a Type and a JP2 and an even 90 spotting and a T30 and cats and dogs living together. Holy crap. So we're trying to uh, snipe these guys the 5-1. Again, we're doing some standoff stuff. And we do have some shots here. Looks like the Centurion's attempting to let us shoot him. But our our defenders are dying wholesale. The Sturv S1 is the next guy to go. It looks like he's just trying to spin around and shoot the CS-59, but it doesn't work very well. Unfortunately, we have guys pushing on a JP and a T-30 and probably the Sturv. And now we got nothing going on at cap. All right, so you have a T-30 coming up. Decision point here, regardless of how we got here. We got a T30 that was smart enough to come back, and maybe the other one is actually moving this way. Sorta, of, not really. Sitting in the bushes over there. What I would do now is, you are the scout of necessity. Drop down these tracks, go down in this low spot, come up over the top here, and try to spot these guys as they come to cap. Help this T30 
get some uh, some damage right there. So we're but what we choose to do is kind of hang out here and hope that we can snipe a lima ding dang. 458 damage. They're definitely going to come up and over here. They've got a good advantage. Or are they? Are they actually going to all turn around and go back? Let's find out. KPZ is doing exactly what I would have done. And the T30 is being maybe a little more aggressive than you would really like. Hopefully he can uh, stay hold down. The problem with where he's going is you get guys like the Type 61 who move around a little bit. And then that supposedly hold down spot becomes not so much hold down anymore. We get an unfortunate armor hit and then we kill him off. So T30 is actually out in the open more than he wants to be. So with you and the KPZ up forward, you maybe keep the guy, those guys busy enough that they don't take out your T30. And now we kind of sit back again. T30 is getting pushed and we're nowhere really near to support. We finally kind of come down this way. That guy dies. There we go. We got the CS59. Bit of a miss. There we go. Oh, that sucks. And now we're backing out of this thing. So really, you're not in too bad a shape right there. Uh, for me, I would have ignored the 59, dove down, go off the right, dove down. you got to prioritize who needs to die. That type needs to go away, and then you can deal with the CS-59, provided you can keep the T-30 alive. But unfortunately, T-30 is about to get double teamed by the type and the CS-59, because we were unable to kill either one of them. Of course, the... Uh, the type's got a lot of hit points. Put a nice shot on him. And this is where we wish we were reloaded. Thumps him. Guy misses. Very nice. We kill him. All right. Well, this is not this is not completely lost, right? Not completely lost. They got one guy in cap. You got a CS-59. We have two on cap. A couple T-30s. A VK-4502. An object 430. So let's see what happens there. And I think right here you're probably thinking, all right, we got this. We can we can make this happen. We'll come around here. We got two guys on cap. There goes the EBR90. Not helpful, but okay. I like this swing around. We really want to just go find that guy in the cap and reset him and then boom. And that's what I was kind of worried about when I was watching. It's like, where the hell is that ELC? Well, there he is. And we don't have a whole lot of time to wait. And we get thumped by the CS59. We don't quite get to this 44 yet. And our guys that we're pushing have just disintegrated. They all were low hit points. They all die wholesale. And it, pretty much at this point, all we're trying to do is get some hit points out of this thing. You get a shot on him. Another shot. Using the building. One more shot. And then we're kind of hurting, right? Because he's going to get one. And we got that long reload. And he's got a really nice, fast reload. I think he's probably going to reload in time. Plus, he knows he can take a hit, so he doesn't really care. He'll just come out and shoot you. And in fact, out reloaded you just a little bit. Of the three so far, I would say this one, you know, be, to be honest, being just straight up with you, this one has uh, more of your DNA in the loss than the others. Meaning that I think it was a, a very extra careful initial position and it didn't really help the team in one way or the other. And we end up just kind of getting some farming damage at the end. But again, I think all three of these have got to about 2,000 damage. So as far as consistency of damage, definitely that is that is going on. All right, let's check out the fourth one. Numero four, we are on Sanddorf, River Himmels. And we go straight to a TD bush. Straight to a TD bush. Uh, so, <laughs> again, being straight up with you. As much as I dislike the last one's initial positioning, I almost despise this initial. <laughs> I don't know why on this map this has become so popular, but I see a lot of people coming up here. And I think this is probably why, because there's going to be potentially some shots, either guys coming up the hill like that one there. Sometimes it's mediums and heavies and things, because you really have a lot of draw distance actually right there. If you saw your guys going up there to get spots, then it's not a bad initial damage position. The problem with it, and, and this is my problem with all such spots, that middle spot in the last map, sitting as far back as you did on the first map, that spot on this map, is it gives up the initiative in more important areas. So maybe it farms a little bit of damage and it creates a, a little bit of an initial hit point advantage for your team. 
but it doesn't get to critical positions, which I actually consider to be up there where those guys are, or potentially down in the south. This is a no artillery game. That south move getting up underneath in these dunes is actually not a bad position. You're not getting a whole lot of support, but you do have an object and a scorpion that can shoot across there potentially. So supporting the Indian or move, making a move down there. Your power, however, is in the north. So if you're assessing after you take that initial careful spot and go, let me get some hit points, which you did, and you assessed, all right, the north is where the power is. That's where I need to go, and I have a fast tank. All right, here we are. Fantastic. I don't like this spot. This tank does not have the turret to do this. This is why I like to go up to the north, especially in a tank like this, because I can move around. I can cover up completely. And I don't let guys have shots at my soft turret slash soft tank. So we take a hit and we don't like it. So we turn around, we get reloaded and we head off. And I'm thinking, all right, he's going to go up the hill and help those guys. And you don't, you go back. So I maybe you're seeing the 7032-122, the IS-3A coming in from this side. Let's talk a little bit about reaction, especially early in the game like this. I have found as I as I get more interested in repositioning and attempting to go to places I'm needed that I have found myself on occasions doing too much back and forth, going from one place to another thinking I need to be here, but never getting settled into a spot and helping the team at that spot. For my money, because your strength is up here, you needed to help them win this in the north. Let's win this. And again, it's prioritization. You only have so much time. Win this in the north, and then we'll come back. Win in the north, then we'll come back. You do have some campers back here. Hopefully, they can hold it off for long enough. But if you, if you split power off the north and don't win here, come down here and don't win in the south, that doesn't help. That doesn't help anything. That doesn't help anything. So sometimes you've just got to rely on your team to do a little bit of something or maybe just enough or die slow enough that you can handle the overmatch in the north and get something going up there. Then guys can come back. We do have good awareness of where to go though. So we're doing some uh, nice jobs as far as finding little spots to, to go to, bushes and rocks. Obviously you know about this spot for the 5120 morts out to the 704. Which is actually a little bit scary. Where the hell is that 704 that he just hit your uh, your 5120? See, when you contract, another problem with going back to cap and contracting is giving the enemy team more map control. Another reason why I like to be a little more aggressive. Looks like we're waiting for the uh, third shot. All right, fantastic. Get a couple in there. Even 90s doing some spots. So you contract back, you lose map control. And guys get spotted. I don't know if did the 5120 actually kill himself? I don't know. Let's find out. There's the 704, so he's right over there. So yeah, he was probably up top. More than likely not gonna get that, but looks like maybe going for that hatch. Nicely done though, nice try. Might as well fire it off and see if you can kill him. There he is. You just ask, yep, yeah, give him some side, there you go. And it looks like we're just kind of losing in every direction now. So as discussed earlier, and this is for the, the people looking for consistency, you know, it becomes a point at this game where, all right, I, I, I do want to win, but in order to do that, I've got to do something about this 5,000 hit point disparity between the teams, and that requires me to farm some damage. That requires me to shred as much damage off of guys as possible, and if I can somehow get back from that, from the brink, by continuing to fire from my position, then I'll do so. And unfortunately, now we're spotted, and guys see us from up there. Guess what? Those are the guys that we needed to kill first, I think. They're all still alive. The other thing to think about here at least the way I look at it philosophically. Even if I am not objectively the best player on the team, I play as if I am. I play as if I am. So if I'm the best player on this team and it's three minutes ago before this all went to hell 
And the overmatch was in the north, and that's where we needed to win first because that's where our best stuff was, to include me. Then I do everything I can do to win that fight first. Everything I can do. And I don't take me, the best player, again, in my own mind. All right, There may objectively be a better player on the team. That's fine. You don't control him. So I get up there. I win that fight. I do everything I can to win that fight. And if I lose that fight where our strength was, no amount of me going back to the cap and trying to stop a little bit of a threat down there is going to matter. Other than maybe to farm some hit points. But I can probably farm them up in the north with the strength around as well if I play well. It's just, it's just a, I think it's a slightly different way to look at it. Potentially, maybe between you and I on, on how we position and, and what we do. So, general overall assessment. Obviously a good player, knows positions on the maps, knows how to run the Progetto. I think you're, you're a little bit more careful than I am. I think a couple of the situations were good. That was a good thing, and a couple of them were a not, not so good thing. So, based on the conversations we've had, I think maybe if you tried being a little bit more aggressive in positioning, if not necessarily in YOLO out and get and trade, meaning get a little bit more forward into the critical terrain before you bail out. Try to get in there and press the, the issue a little bit. Get your get the snowball rolling. Help your team get the snowball, snowball rolling earlier and then use that great fallback instinct a little bit later. Not too late. That's the trick, right? And I, You've probably been burned that way, which is why, why I think you're a little more spring-loaded to getting out. And then I've done that before, and that's something you have to continue to fight against. But I think if you work a little bit more forward on the aggression, a little bit, not a lot, not a lot of bit, a little bit, you might find that you start to create the advantages for your teams earlier, which should help them out. <clears throat> the last thing about that, for me anyway, and this is Guido's personal opinion, I enjoy that kind of gameplay more rather than constantly falling back and then when you constantly when you I find when I'm always falling back and attempting to fix all the problems at once I don't enjoy that because because I don't fix all the problems at once you never will really and then you, you just always feel like you're on your back foot and then it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy where your play style is always on the back foot yeah I'm getting my 2,000 damage but my teams darn teams they can't do anything well you're not there right you're, you're not if you're not there even if they are bad and they screw up at least you were there trying to trying to to help the team out in that situation anyway guys that's uh that's my two cents on that quite a long video i uh, hope you liked it it is a diff slightly different meta the days of being able to just roll forward and stomp all over people are uh are probably gone the maps are pretty well known. Even bad players kind of know where to go and, and how to fight the maps, even if they don't necessarily do it. There are a lot of overpowered tanks. Frankly, this is kind of one of them. It's a good tank. has a lot of power. I mean, look at its, uh, look at its ace requirements and its MOE re requirements. They're crazy. So because you have a good number of these kinds of tanks in the game, it's hard to uh, get one over on people who have good tanks and good crews. So it's just becoming a little bit harder, a little bit harder. So it's it's still careful aggression though, even if it's not you know super hyper aggression. That is all I've got for today. I think lots to think about for everybody. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. This is Guido signing out, and we will see you.